Let's just go ahead and jump on into it. Kim Bella and Jewels. Basically, Jewels, you say you didn't do it. Yeah, the drugs was yours, but the guns in the bag wasn't yours. Don't take that plea deal. That's the worst thing you can ever do. You lucky to be on house arrest. You better enjoy that and run with that. Take that mess to trial. Go ahead and do what you got to do. Go ahead and try to defend yourself the best way you can or have your lawyer defend you the best way he can and get whatever you get for defending your own self or taking it to trial because that plea deal you're, you are admitting guilt and you said that gun, them guns weren't girls in our bag. So I recommend you take that to trial and go ahead and get you a, well, try to get you a fair and honest trial out because you in a shitty situation either way you turn it or look at it. So either you take the plea deal, plea deal you damned if you do, you damned if you don't. If you take it to trial and you are successful in proving that them guns wasn't girls in that bag, you still fucked up. That can add more time on it for wasting the taxpayers' money. So in your book... I'd rather take it to trial. I wouldn't take no plea deal because that plea deal means you admitting guilt and you admitted that you, it's like you admitting guilt or whatever. So if I was you, fuck the plea deal, take it to trial, whatever happens, happens. I'd rather take my chances than wasting taxpayers' money than take that, um, taking that plea deal and admitting guilt. And you know, when you admit guilt, they mean you guilty for all that. So I wouldn't take no plea deal. That's out of the picture. Like Juju said, my dad, or I think she said her dad took a plea deal and it messed him up because he admitted guilt for whatever he was going through. And they tried to add more time on him just for taking that plea deal when it Thought when you thought it was a clear, um, a clear cut deal, and it turned out it wasn't a clear cut deal, and you still getting more time added and all this. Yeah, take the plea. I mean, take take it to trial. Now, Kim Bell, uh, I'm okay with you with the whole Joel situation and dealing with that and going through, especially what Yandy been going through every season of Love and Hip Hop. What I don't appreciate, however, is the fact that you was riding die for Yandy. You was all in her baby mama drama, stepmommy drama, all that with all the baby mamas and all that shit two seasons ago, three seasons ago, however long ago that was. I understand why you mad. Yandy might not understand why you mad. You was ride or die for your girlfriend, trying to give her her rights as a stepmammy and trying to help her out or whatever. But you should have known Yandy was a no good old. I ain't gonna even, I'm gonna be nice this season. I'm gonna be nice. No, but you should have known it came with some consequences of you doing what you did that whole entire season, even showing up to that birthday party. You're mad about that because what she said at the reunion and how she threw you under the bus on the whole situation. And basically, y'all both got caught up. She didn't admit, she, she didn't admit guilt, but you did. And, you got all the blame for that, and she ain't get no type of blame or consequences for that. Like, you was ride or die for your girl. You was willing to ride for her, do all that messy stuff like y'all always do. You want to give her her rights. You took your own behind to that birthday party where you got turned, while you got turned around at the door. That was all you, none of Yandy. Like, you gonna have to eat some of that. And you should have known what you was getting into. And that normal and that's normally what happened when you on your girl back, your girl back, your friend back, or whatever back. If they ain't your family and you doing all well, you said you consider Yandy like family. So some of your families are low down dirty snakes. And you know Yandy won. Well now you know she won. Cause she you see how you saw how she throwed you under the bus and she acting like she didn't send you down into that birthday party trying to help you out, trying to defend you. She didn't much take some of the heat for you. She let you sit there and take all the heat heat while she sat there looking pretty and didn't admit to anything. No, I didn't tell Kim Bella to go down into that party. That was all her doing like 
Both of y'all were childish as fuck, and I can understand why you're mad, though, but you was defending your friend, your family, your best friend, your girlfriend. Why defending her and defending her honor? You should have known sooner or later it was going to come back to bite you in the ass because that's normally what happened. This is why you ought to be careful who you call a friend. Because push come to shove or ride or die, you never know when that die part going to end. And basically, Yandy dead to you now. You did all them antics for her last season. You're willing to get pushed around, get fight, argument, all that stuff you went through with Yandy last year with them baby mamas. And now look at you. You and Yandy ain't friends. You mad about this situation. Yandy still think y'all friends. When you told her at Jonathan Party that y'all ain't friends, she all shocked and appalled and talk about some in the confessional. Now you know you need me. I went through this. Now you going through this. If this is what you really mad at me about by the kid's birthday party, like I told you to go down there and help me to fit my honor, like... Yanny don't give a fuck, and I don't really give a fuck. I just had to let that be known, though, Kim Bella. Be careful who you ride or die for, because not all snakes going to be there to help you at the end. Now, she got you looking like a damn fool, and, well, we know why you mad. She just want to know why the hell you so mad. So, pick your friends wisely, Kim Bella. That's about all I can tell you. Pick your friends wisely next time, man. Yandy ain't the type of bitch that's going to apologize for nothing. You should have known better. I know you consider her family or whatever. Pick your friend next time. Better yet, before you jump into a battle, make sure she got your back just as hard as you got hers. Because you really didn't had no business getting into all that mess like that. What, how many season ago it was, but you jumped your ass in it. You were ready to party, ready to rumble for Yandy. Now that the party over and all the stuff on, now the, all the um, blame getting pointed at you. Oh, you don't like that shit now, huh, um, Kim Bella? Well, I guess enjoy. I don't want to hear you and Yandy go back and forth the whole season. Basically, basically you mad at her. Yanda look like she can care less. She ain't going to take no ownership or responsibility for that. She fr frankly don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. When all that happened and that reunion ended and all that was over with, I was over with that whole situation when it came to the baby mamas and Yandy the snake. I'm not fit to sit here and go back and forth with y'all over who was wrong and who was right and why the Kim Bella show up to that party trying to defend my honor. Now she mad at me because I'm out of... Made, made a made a um mat truck run over that ass. Now she mad at me because the truck then ran over her ass. Like, eat it, Ken Bella, eat it. Don't annoy me the whole season with that. Cause if you continue this on after this episode, I give you three episodes of this to be mad at Yandy. After them three episodes, I'm just gonna ignore you while you mad at Yandy. Cause you're never gonna get what you want from Yandy. Yandy don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. She ain't going to apologize, and I ain't going to apologize for not fast-forwarding your ass when you come on my um, TV screen talking about this when you got real life issues at home. Rather your um, boo fit to go to jail or rather he not fit to go to jail for half of his life, a piece of his life, or his whole life that he got left on this earth like. Kim Bella, worry about your family home and fuck Yandy. If you're not talking to the snake, let the snake go ahead and just um, slither, um, slither through the grass and, and let her enjoy her day. Let her go eat a rat or something like. Leave it alone, Kim Bella. Just let it go. Worry about family, huh? Worry about family first. Don't forget the snake. Let the snake enjoy her day. Let the snake enjoy her, her um. Let the snake enjoy her day and let her get prepared for winter. Let her shed her skin and get ready to put put on her winter skin. Like leave it alone, would you? I'm tired of hearing it. Alexis, uh, guys, she went to see her grandmother. Basically, Alexis Sky loved her daughter. Daughter, the grandmama obsessed and loved the daughter too, and she said, basically, she brought joy back into my life. Cause I guess the mama 
didn't have much to do when Alexa Scott was running from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta to Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, trying to confront Masika and running behind Masika. Basically, the baby gave the grandmama back life again, and she was glad she was there, happy to see her. Um, glad Masika let her stay in New York with her. Sorry, like I said before, sorry about all the baby health issues and the baby um brain bleeding and all that, and y'all both almost died and all that. But for the most part, your grandmama loved that baby, and you loved that baby too. And it's a good combination. And um, I like that little scene with you and your grandmother. Now, the scene that pissed me off the most with you, Alexis Sky, you really got to let this better walk bullshit go away. After that, how he had you stood up in that damn studio, you walking around waiting on him, talking about some finally finishing this unfinished business. Fast them damn papers to his house, to his mammy house, to his daddy house, anybody else. I, I, Giving a tradeway here when he coming out here a tradeway hand him to him do something when it comes to Fetty Wild don't nobody want to hear that motherfucking name my last this guy he didn't stood you up again they made you look dumb again now I don't know what Masika doing with her life over there on Love and Hip Hop um growing up here Pop Atlanta but it's time to um dead that Fetty Wap situation you're never gonna get what you want from him he's childish he's immature he a kid that know got a dick and know how to use it and know how to use sperm and know how to have kids so unless this guy at this point he didn't embarrass you again. Please leave Fetty Wap name out your damn mouth. And please, for the life of me, stop entertaining that man. I don't care if he tell you to meet him down the road to the corner skull. Stand his ass up like he done done you multiple times. And I'm pretty sure this ain't the first time where he done stood you up up there. Using a dog walking around for 20, 30, 45 minutes. Walking around the studio waiting on him with them papers. Hoping he finally gonna step up as a father. And he done stood you up. Got you looking like a damn fool. While loving hip hop put the wasting film with you walking around the studio like... Unless this guy tell Fetty Wap to go to hell and tell him to stick his finger up his ass or something like, don't waste your time with that clown no more. He gonna get everything that's gonna be that's gonna be deserved to him when them children grow up. Like I said, he might have his fun having y'all stood up with all his children. He round here having fun making. Them children gonna come back to bite him in the ass when they ask where the hell you been at when I was growing up. Why you wasn't in my life? Now I'm somebody and I'm grown up. Now all of a sudden you like your children, y'all children are gonna get that fucker back. Like. Kids don't forget nothing. They always remember stuff. They always know who consistent in their life or whatever. When that fucker tries to come around them kids' lives, they gonna have nice parting words for his ass, and that's gonna hurt him. Y'all not gonna hurt that man. Them kids gonna hurt his ass more than y'all ever gonna hurt him. So, unless this guy stop wasting your time with that clown and go ahead and do you and worry about your music and your EP or whatever else the hell you coming out with worry about you and your daughter fuck fatty wop fatty wop ain't nothing but a damn kid is dumb kids will get him you ain't got to worry babe masika one child your child and anybody else he didn't implanted his egg his seed in and had a child with they all gonna get his ass together one by one embarrassing his ass like he did y'all so trust me don't do nothing unless it's he gonna get his sooner rather than later um, Jonathan Sh Shy and Kim Bella, basically Kim Bella talking about her and this plea deal and all this again. She didn't talk to Juju about it. Now she's talking to Shy and, um, Jonathan about it. Um, Shy still around here complaining and moaning about her man don't love her. He never home. He always working. I won't say it. I'm sitting up there wearing out my rat, wearing out my rabbit. I didn't use this rabbit about three times a day, and I'm always burning up batteries in it because he don't have sex with me. So now she done went to the 
I guess the mall and found the perfume for him, hoping it'd attract him like a snake to her and make him want to jump on her. And, um, so Jonathan Tall and basically he brought them all together and this is where the shit hit the fan. Basically, Jonathan don't like, um, Juju no more, calling her fake as fucking all that and this, that and the other one. Uh, we already know Kim Bell and Yandy. I didn't cover all that. And she hoped that Yandy going to be there to the party and hoping Kim Bell and Yandy don't get into it. Wish they got into it and they carried on and arguing bigger than where Kim Bell did all the yelling. Um, Kim Bell wouldn't, wouldn't let Yandy talk at all. So she was sitting there looking dumb, couldn't say nothing at all because Kim Bell was talking over her. So. Jonathan basically mad at Kim, um, Juju because he basically told her a uh, plan he had in motion. Basically, he wanted to do like a little um, radio type thingy. Um, him and Juju was going to go in together. Basically, long story short, he feared that Juju took his idea, ran with it, ran to Florida with the idea, did the meeting, Secured the, the whatever the hell he was working on and secured his bag, secured her bag with his idea and left him out of the situation. And now he feels on top of way calling Juju fake phony. She a two dollar faker in a two dollar bill. This, that, and the other. It had a whole lot of shit to say about um about Juju while she wasn't around. But when Kim Bella started talking about Yandy, he was there to defend Yandy. But when he started talking about Juju, Kim Bella started defending um, Juju, and he don't like that. But you notice also at that party that what he was saying about Kim Bella, he couldn't say the, he couldn't say to her face, he couldn't say to her in her face about everything he said about her around Kim Bella and Shine. And basically, he had on his good boy boxers, and I don't want to do this in front of nobody. I just want to talk to you. I, I, I just want to tell you why I said everything about you. Can we please step to the side of something? Talking all friendly, all nice, all cordial, but you a fuck her, fuck her. She pay. She phonier than a $2 bill. All this and all that, all loud and proud and happy as saying it. But when we get to our party... I don't want to do this right now. I just want to have a conversation over here in the corner where I'm talking like this monotone and not raising my voice because you right here in front of my face and I'm scared you might punch me in my face if I get loud and say all that stuff I said about you, Ron Kimbell and Shy. So if I say that Ron, you, I'm scared you might punch me in the face and box me like a man and not a woman. So I just want to explain to you where this coming from and how I feel. And basically, basically, I believe Juju, cause Jonathan, you is messy. You call, um, you call Juju fake and phony. Juju ain't fake nor phony at all. That's you, Jonathan. You fake, you phony, you messy and everything under the sun. Like, you is so messy. And I do believe that, um, Juju tried to help you when she did that meeting in Florida, like she said, that you couldn't go to. Y'all idea, well, your idea that you throw to her, she went and did the meeting for you as a friend. Your tired ass couldn't make it to Florida or couldn't, you know, the land for another day or two till you wasn't busy to go down there with her. She had to do the meeting. She took her time out and all this. So, and she did take this deal for you. So fucking what, Jonathan? You should have had your ass there to deal with it yourself. How you gonna have somebody else go take a meeting for you, but this your idea? So, do I feel bad for you, Mancy, that she went and took your idea and secured the bed for herself and fuck you in your idea? I don't feel bad for you, Jonathan, because that was your plan. That was your concept. You came up with it. You told her about it. Then you had her go down there and take care of the meeting for you because your ass was too busy. And you couldn't handle your own damn deal. So do I feel bad for you? Hell no. Um, 
yeah, I don't feel bad for you, Jonathan, at all. Not even much a little bit. And of course, and I used with her messy, loud, that scrack, uh, messy, loud, singing happy birthday to him and all that mess. And her little short little, her short little dress. Her and Juju got into it, of course, cause, um, and Naive feels somewhere about Kim Bella because she was there defending um Yandy. She was there, um, Kim Bella was there defending Yandy because that whole little trip they went on and Kim Bella was always there defending Yandy. So any chance she got to get back at um, Kim Bella, she ran with up the arguing with Kim Bella and all this and that. Um, then we had Yandy and Kim Bella. Kim Bella taking over the conversation. We didn't let Yandy talk at all. Look like we going to hear this the rest of the season about um Jonathan and um Juju. They love whatever the hell they got going on. We going to hear that the whole entire season, too. I'm glad um Joe realized he was wrong and he fucked up with the whole situation with the whole um the hotel room in the city and now he trying to make it up realizing he was too busy for his girl and she might be wearing out her sex toys so he made her breakfast in bed and gave her a kiss and he and um said he gonna take a week off of work and he gonna take her to Cabo and. He said a week off the work and something involving work, though, but not too much work or whatever he said, and she okay and fine with that. But before he mentioned he was taking her on, um, taking her to Cabo, she said, oh, you're going to have to try a lot harder than this to get back to me again, to get us back good again. You got to do more than this and that, so whatever. So you playing hard to get um Kim Bella, I mean Kim Bella. Shy, you playing hard to get, and this man trying to tell you he's sorry. He even willing to take you on a trip, to slide the credit card for the trip. Shy, you better stop playing hard to get in, hard to get and go on, uh, and go on, on the um, Cabo and have fun with your man now. He and admitted that he was wrong and he fucked up and he's sorry he pissed you off. Enjoy your trip and please stop complaining about your man ain't giving you no dick. Please, Joe, give her some dick. Please give her some dick. If I ain't got to hear her complain no more, I very much appreciate it. Please give her some dick. That's all. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. I cleared it all up in one sitting. Wow. So, yeah, that's about it, y'all. Anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.